and sometimes I also love my data stream so much. I really want to hold on to them, especially the ones that are so good, feel so good like falling in love and being in an intimate relationship and having the, the best time of my life, having the best holiday and the best minute, <laughs> you know, like I don't want it to, to, to go away. And I mean, I was so uh, focused on my intimate relationship as, as something in my life and truly believe that it, uh, it means something about me and about our relationship and about our future together and everything was just focused on that. And um, my husband is here, he can, he can also confirm, but you know, I used to speak a lot with him. We both speak, but I will, I will just share my experience. I spoke a lot about my feelings, about my emotions, checking him if he loves me enough, if it stays, you know, and today, do you love me how much? <laughs> you know, and really uh, uh, doing everything so I can get that confirmation almost every moment for this love that will always last and that, you know, that feeling of, oh, it's really nice to be together. But it wasn't the case. You know, it didn't really, I couldn't keep the I love you in place. <laughs> I couldn't really hang out on and on to it and because I also didn't feel it in myself all the time. You know, like sometimes you don't feel that the same love and you don't want to admit it, but you're really afraid of it. It means something about the relationship. Okay, maybe I need to change my partner. And I really thought about that. You know, I really believed something about him needs to change so I feel happy. So before we, we met the training, I mean, I, we spoke a lot about our feelings and emotions and going deeper and deeper and it's almost like so tempting and wow, it gives lots of sensations and stories and descriptions and it's fun, but, well, it's not really fun, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's, un it's just like very interesting, right? Very interesting to know what people think about us, what my partner think about me, what people think about what I just said and always that confirmation because something about me didn't feel like completely confirmed <laughs> you know that love is not always present so how I can make it present all the time I need to be better I definitely need to uh, get rid of my sadness or afflictive states um, you know feeling like I'm not good enough or I'm not loved enough not to think about it so I really tried all these things, especially speaking about my feelings and emotions, because I, I really I felt like I'm expressing that so <coughs> in such honesty. I mean, this is me. I want to express myself, and I want him to express myself. So it was a whole story and energy that was wasted on these descriptions that didn't lead anywhere because it was always changing. Does it change for you too all the time? Oh, it's only for me. No way, yeah? <laughs> you know, one day we're just completely in love, the second day we're less, the third day we want to leave, the fourth day we, dis or we regret about thinking that way, and the fifth day, and, it's, uh, and it can be also moments of just changeless <coughs> descriptions. So anyway, let's go right to the practice of short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times. It becomes continuous, it really does. It's a short moment that we let everything just be as it is. Let, like whenever you find yourself describing your, what you're feeling or thinking, even if it looks so deep and amazing, like you're so mem mesmerized by that, your feelings, you cry when you think about that and you're so touched and then you let it be as it is, just like that, resting naturally as we are, without doing anything about what we're feeling or thinking. And that even gives just the most amazing satisfaction of every moment as it is because there is no need to change it to something else there is a complete uh, openness and stability that is available right here in each short moment of open intelligence so the focus doesn't go to the descriptions it goes to something about us, open intelligence that is always present and that recognition grows and grows and grows. The more we take short moment of open intelligence, the more we recognize it. 
it's like the more we emphasize data, the more we see data. So it's, it's, very, um, it's very logical. It makes so sense, so much sense. And then open intelligence, it's, uh, it's, um, it's so instinctive. You know, it's like uh, you have, I had so many afflictive states, like sadness and loneliness, and really feeling so bad about myself, really feeling like I need to change. But then I know I have a short moment of open intelligence. And I took this data streams as the opportunity to practice, to deepen my recognition. And it is so amazing because it's like, wow, even that doesn't need to change. It's, it's incredible. I don't need to change my afflictive states. I can let them be as they are. So that was the beginning of starting to get to know something about me that is wide open, stable, at ease, no matter what. That stability I wanted to myself, that kind of freedom. And especially during the 12 empowerments, there is no way of not really looking at everything that we are avoiding in our relationships and in ourselves. For me, it was really uh, so uh, empowering to look at the ways I've been handling with data. Like, for example, sadness comes up, what do I do? Usually I replace it with happiness, with positive thoughts. Loneliness comes up, usually what do I do? I drink something, I go out with friends, I call my parents, you know, I just do all kinds of things. I watch a movie, not to feel that kind of uh, sadness or loneliness. Or I have a circumstance with my husband and then it, it, it's really like, it's like uh, my heart is just shut down and it feels so painful and sad. What do I do? I go out for a walk, I listen to music, I try not to think about it. That's what I did before. So you can look at the ways, what are you doing when afflictive states arise? And then test short moment of complete perceptual openness. Perceptual openness, it means that you open no matter what comes up. And relying on short moments will show you how to exactly extract the power. And what it means to extract the power, it's like letting it be as it is until it self release and leaves no trace whatsoever. But this energy that is experienced in afflictive states can be of great benefit to all. And that's something that you can each test in your experience, and you already tested that. So you, I know that you have lots to share that. And for me, to see that I'm not affected by what I'm thinking and feeling, or being tired, or lazy, or you know, not wanting to do something, don't feel like, it's, it's, it's incredible that I'm free of these afflictive states. They don't inform anymore my actions, my speech. Like, do you know what I'm thinking now? I mean, I don't know what I'm thinking now, but you know, do you know what? <laughs> if, if everyone here would go ahead with what you think, then it's, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a bad situation. <laughs> Just simply put, and we can look at the world and we see that when we, when we emphasize our data streams, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good to anyone. So for me, it was very grounding to settle into my own power, to feel powerful within myself, to extract the power of all these feelings that I was so rejecting, don't want to feel or try to do something else. And the 12 empowerments gave me all the tools, like, you know, a trainer, a trainer I can write to. Really um, take support on my situation in a clear way, not like using a person as a trash bin for my data streams. That was my husband. I just used him a lot, just what I feel now and how you can fix it. And you are to blame because I feel that. And that's, that's because you didn't tell me how much you love me, or you should have done something else. And I'm always the one who gives more, and you give less. And you know, it's like comparing myself to the person and just, you know, waiting, like being so charged and waiting to say something that that is the cause for my well being. That's not the way I wanted to live. And I wanted to really make a change for myself. So the 12 Empowerment was that change.
taking responsibility? That was an amazing question because suddenly all this data that I was immediately emphasized, I could say that it's my responsibility to make open intelligence obvious. Rather than emphasizing the data, I can take responsibility for my own data, for what comes up for me. It doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I can take responsibility and rest naturally with everything that comes up and what comes out of that, the results, uh, are so powerful because um, it's nothing I was expecting. I, I said to myself, okay, if I take responsibility, everything will just stay the same and I will just be so unhappy in my relationship. You have this, oh, my sadness will stay forever, my loneliness. If I don't do anything, what's that? So that, that is the opportunity to really look at what open intelligence provides on a, on a very powerful um, recognition to say that by letting everything be as it is, there is just um, far more energy, space, uh, compassion, understanding, um, direct action to take that is of great benefit. The speech is just, um, it's something that is just so open and loving and not loaded with data. Yeah, that's what happened in my relationship when I took responsibility. So I can just let, let it be as it is and I can speak in a heartfelt way. I can ask things from, from, from a heartfelt you know, place and just feeling so uh, open to what comes up for me and taking responsibility also for my actions, for my activities, to be of benefit, and that changed everything in the relationship to myself, my family, my, my husband, and relationship to life, relationship to ideas, to everything. So that's what is provided here, starting with short moments and then making that shift that will reveal to us in the 12 empowerments what is a true responsibility and true way of being that is of benefit.